define what's a good and what's a service can really help you in your understanding of money. Okay, so today we're going to look at how we can get money, how we can use it, when should we save and when should we spend, how we save it, where we save it, and the differences between needs and wants. And I'm sure you guys are probably experts on a few topics that we're going to be looking at, so that's a cool thing. Um, this is a pretty simplified look at how you can get money in the first place. Usually it starts with a job and you get a salary and you can save it or spend it. There's also another part which would be investing or donating, but um, this one's pretty simple. Saving or spending it. So you could save it, um, maybe you're saving it for a very long-term goal, like for instance college or buying a house. And then if you spend it, you might be spending it on a service or you might be spending it on a good. How many of you get allowance? Raise your hand if you get allowance. I'm seeing some raised hands. Wow, that's a lot more. When I was about your age, I don't think as quite as many people got allowance. Wow, so quite a lot of you. Now, the money that you get in allowance, raise your hand if you have to do chores in order to get it. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of raised hands too. All right, so it's not quite easy money then. That, that's sort of, think of it sort of like, so you're doing the job and you're getting a salary, um, is how you might think of your allowance. So you're getting money in exchange for a service that you're providing. What, is, what are the chores that you usually have to do to get that allowance? Anyone want to give an example? Dishes, laundry, washing little brother or sister, great. Yeah, so those are all the services that you're providing in return for that allowance. So you have this money now, and what do you usually do with your money? Does anyone want to tell, uh, tell me, what do you usually do with your allowance money? Do you save it? Do you spend it? No. You save it. Great. And are you saving up for anything? I'm sorry? A game. Oh, you're saving up for a game. Great. Okay, so you can save up for something like, for instance, a game, a book, whatever you want from your allowance. You could also, if you wanted to collect, if you wanted to save from like every single allowance for many, many years, you could save for something really, really big. Um, so there's different ways to save and spend. Now, if, uh, raise your hand if you ever take your allowance and you think, well, you know what, I just really want to go to the store and buy that something I've had my eye on. Does anyone just spend it pretty quickly? I'm seeing some raised hands. Okay, so we're seeing, uh, and what do you usually spend it on? You want to give me Morgan, go ahead. What was the question? What do you spend your money on? I spend my money on like toys, like on like toys and stuff like that. Toys. Okay, great. So now we have this idea of how you can save and you can save up for something, you can spend it right away. And this is perfect because we're going to be looking at um, not right and wrong, but just how to do both more effectively. All right. So, here's a list of goods and services. Uh, getting a job. So, right now, maybe in uh, a few years, you'll be able to do a lot of different jobs, like around the neighborhood and even around your city. So, once you have that money, you can do a lot of things with it. But the question is, how do you save money? When you're spending money, how do you make sure that you're saving? And you're not spending $100 on something that really isn't quite worth that much. What do you think, what would be your top tips? If you were telling someone, here's how you save money when you go shopping, what would be your top tips? and see what's cheap, what's not so cheap. And another thing that you might do is you could see what's on sale or on clearance, use coupons, all great ways 
uh, to do that. So, I want to hear your opinion. Let's have a little discussion about saving and spending. What do you think uh, is better? Most saving of the time. So why do you think so why do you so um, for those of you who think saving is better, why do you think saving is better? Why do you think saving is better? Um saving is better because if you if you spend it right away you'll have more money to if you spend it right away, you'll have no money. So you might uh, have a situation where you get, um, let's say you have $5, and you see something as you're walking down the street at the store, and you're like, I really just have to have that right now. You go and you spend all your $5, and then you go back, and you realize, oh no, there's another thing I want really bad, and there's another, but you don't have the money anymore. So yeah, both buying on impulse and spending right away can be bad. Uh, now, for those of you who think spending is better, why do you think spending is better? Because if you like, if you like what groceries, yeah, exactly. There are things that you might need. Um, for instance, groceries. Imagine what would happen if your parents uh, saved all their money and never spent any money. spending on clothes, that means no spending on the haircut that a lot of you, uh, it seems, just got. So, you need to remember that while saving is always good, remember that saving and spending um, are both necessary. So, when you uh, get to be of an age where you're going to be paying for everything yourself, luckily we're not quite that age yet, we can still live off our parents, but when you get to be that old then you'll have to realize that You'll not only be spending on the things that you really want, but you'll have to um, spend on things like groceries, food, shelter, stuff like that that is really necessary um, as a need. So, saving and spending, remember to do both in moderation, as they say. Now, it's always good to, when you receive, let's say, $5, to set aside some to save and set aside some to spend. Or, if you say, well, I really don't need to spend any money right now, then yeah, you can save it all. So, those are just some uh, different things to think about. Now, as far as saving money while spending, which is kind of interesting to think about, clipping coupons is a great way. And then also, waiting until prices drop before you buy something new. Have any of you really, really wanted a new item before? Maybe you want something new right now. What's something new that you really want? Jonathan? A new Xbox 360. Okay, new Xbox 360. Wow, you have your eye on some pretty big ticket items. Now, how much, do you know about how much does an Xbox 360 cost? <laughs> it might not be quite a hundred million. Uh, you might take a few zeros off. So it's it's somewhere it's in the hundreds. So I'm not sure of the exact number, but it's definitely a um, hundred dollars or more. I'm fairly sure. So the Xbox 360. Do you think it cost more when it first came out, like on the first day that you could buy an Xbox 360? Yes. 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 Yes.
Let's uh, let's use a different example. Um, how about? Oh, I know. The when a movie first comes out, have any of you gone to see like a um, the premiere of a really big movie? Yeah. Okay. So uh, some of you might have gone to see the premiere of a really big movie. So for instance, for me, I went to see this um, the final Harry Potter movie 3D on at midnight, um, and it cost a lot. It cost about fourteen dollars per ticket to see a movie. And that's pretty expensive, I would say, right? That's almost double what you usually pay. So on the very first, yeah, I know I'm not a very good example, having done that, um, but if you really, really want something new, you might want to wait a couple days or a couple weeks, a couple months, depending on how good your self-control is um, in order to get it. Maybe you've seen, have any of you seen uh, how many people would line up or even camp out to get the newest iPhone? Yeah, you've seen that? So, again, if you waited, um, not only would a new version have come out, but also might have been uh, a bit less expensive. So, waiting to get a movie on DVD as well, if you can wait that long, is definitely a waste of money. Don't buy things in season. Uh, this is something good if you can, if you can really plan out. Like, for instance, now or right after the holidays, might be an amazing time to get presents because stores are now uh, putting everything on clearance that they didn't manage to sell during the holidays. Or right after Halloween, probably all the costumes that didn't get sold are going to go on sale. So that's something interesting to know. Recycle, reuse, reduce. Does anyone have an older brother or sister? Raise your hand. All right, so I have an older sister and she goes through a lot of binders and backpacks and I actually benefit from that. You can both save the environment and not uh, waste money by using your older brother and sister's old school supplies as long as they're still functioning. So for instance, I have this nice purple binder from my sister that still works just fine. Uh, the fact that she wrote her name all over it is a little bit unfortunate. So her name's Adriana and she's written Adri all like on every single surface and little hearts and stuff like that. But the awesome thing about recycling or reusing your older brother or sister's Binders and stuff, if they've written their name all over it, you can add it is stupid at the end. Um, you might not want to do that. Well, it can be a little satisfying. Alright, so if you have any, if you're looking at the items on your school supplies list and you already have them in the house, make sure to reuse them. Sign up for free customer incentive programs. So if there's a restaurant you like to go to a lot, then they might have a punch card that shows you can go there. Um, find out whether your local restaurants have discount days and uh, shop at second hand and thrift stores. So those are a few tips for me. Now, what do you think if you could tell someone one thing that is the most important thing they should do? How would you boil down all your advice in one sentence? Save it up for college, okay, so um, save it up for college, that's great. I'm going to write these down in a Word document. Um, save it up for college, what else? So I'm sure that we all have maybe different, or one sentence things, like the most important thing to do with money. So we have save it up for college. Anyone else have, have an idea? Like, you can you say, you can, you can save it up for college, but Save your money. Only, only buy it now when you need to. Okay. Oops. Hmm, for some reason, it's not typing. Uh, that's really strange. Uh. All right. Well, that's unfortunate. It's not writing. I'm going to try something else. All right. Only buy it when you really need to. Uh. Sorry about this. It's being a little bit persnickety. All right, um, so only buy when you really need to. Wow. So needs versus wants. Saving up for college. And is there any last piece of advice that you would give someone if you were saying, here's how you can really save and spend money? Uh, save up for a car. 
save up for a car. So maybe if we want to summarize this, there are bigger things that you can save up for. So don't always spend your money on things you don't need right away. How about that? Good summary? Yeah. So the so exactly. So the thing about money is that you realize that there's always sort of bigger things on the horizon. There's things like college, or if you really wanted a car or a TV, sure there are items. Um, but maybe if there's a summer camp that you really want to go to that is far away, and you might want to save up um, to go there, something like that. So always remember to have your long-term spending goals in mind. All right. So. We're going to talk a little bit now about different forms of money. Uh, how many of you have ever been to a different country? Where's your hand if you've been to a different country? Wow, quite a lot of you. So when you went to that different country, you had to get a different type of currency, right? You had different uh, types of money. So I'm going to, we're going to look quickly at some different types of money and talk a little bit about international money. Um, so first, uh, see if you can guess where this is from. It's from Europe. That's very good. You guys are getting getting really close. So yes, this is from Europe. Anyone want to guess the country? It is it is ten dollars. Well, let's see. I don't know how well it text. You can see the text, but it says Bank Nationale Swiss. So what country do you think this is from? Well, it's from. Um, it says. On, on the back, it has four languages, and it says uh, Banque Nationale Suisse, Banque Nationale Suisse, Dies Franc, uh, and I don't know how to pr pronounce this correctly in, in Italian, but um, the four languages should tip you off if you know too much about Switzerland. Um, Switzerland actually has four official languages. So, looking at money can actually tell you quite a bit about the country. And this is, so this is the currency of Switzerland. Let's take a look at uh, another one. See if, see if you can guess this one right away. Maybe some of you have heard of the United Arab Emirates, and uh, there's some very large cities there, Dubai and Abu Dhabi. So this is from the United Arab Emirates, and you can see there's Arabic written on it, and it's five dirhams. Okay, and let's do one more. This one should be pretty easy to recognize if you can see the text. All right, so this is actually a pretty big, a pretty big bill. <laughs> Mexico. Perfect. So you see how we can take a look at money from all over the world. Uh, we have money, and I'll show you this on a map actually. We have money that is from uh, Mexico. We have money that is from the Middle East. And we have money that is from, from Europe. And that is pretty awesome that looking at money you can kind of think, wow, it came from all these different parts of the world. So I'm really lucky to have been able to travel quite a bit and pick up different forms of uh, different currencies. All right, so when you spend money, how do you think it plays into something way bigger called the economy? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? When, um, let's say I have my $5 and I go spend it on uh, getting my lawn mowed. Then have you ever thought about what the person who mowed my lawn might do with that $5? Have you ever thought about where your money kind of goes? Think about the story we read this week, the go around the and think about all the places it went. So the question was, if you paid someone five dollars to mow your lawn, what do you think will happen to that five dollars? Think about the stories it talked about. Yeah, where are some places it might go? Crystal? Yeah. 
Okay, it's a want. Great. So even within things like food and clothes that are essential, you can find wants. So for instance, a $300 pair of designer jeans would probably be a want, even though it is clothes. So make sure to uh, keep an eye out for this. And some examples of wants would be a flat screen TV. What else? A video game. Great. And one more? A mansion. A mansion. A mansion. A huge mansion. Your, your very own castle. Something like that. Yeah. Those would all definitely be wants. So thinking about needs and wants critically when you're spending money is important. And make sure that you cover your needs first. If it's really, really cold outside and you need new gloves and a hat, then you should probably buy that before you think about the video game or the chocolate bar, right? So, needs and wants. And does anyone here have a bank account? Okay, great. So you raise your hand. So you should already know quite a lot about how money can go to a bank. You could put it in a piggy bank, but once you have more than, you know, $30, $50, whatever the amount of money might be, then you probably want to put it into a savings account and make uh, a lot safer. And another cool thing is that you can collect interest. Does anyone know what interest is? Well, this one's a bit of a tricky one, but sometimes when you put uh, it might depend on what kind of account you have, but let's say you just put it into a, a normal checking or savings account, then the bank will usually actually pay you some money for having your money in the bank, which is called interest. It's a small percentage of what you have in. So if you put in $100 and interest is, I don't know, 2%, then you could get $2 every year for just having that money in there. That's a pretty simple way of looking at interest. but. Um, that's one of the advantages of putting money in the bank. To keep track of the money you spend, you might want to keep a spending journal, and that's also handy for looking back and thinking, hmm, how have I saved money? So it can be a good way to pat yourself on the back. And in your spending journal, you could categorize what you bought, maybe even say this is a need, this is a one. You're never too young to start smart with money. The important thing to realize is that we all have the ability to spend and save and be part of this larger economy. And so thinking of yourself as just as important as anyone else who's saving and spending is really important. And so today's choices really affect tomorrow's outcomes. The decisions that you decide to make today with your money can really affect where you're going to go, whether you have enough money to save, um, buy something you really want in the future, go somewhere you really like to go, all these things, the choices you make today affect what happens tomorrow. Alright, so who wants to sum up a few of the things that they were? <coughs>
right after you've looked at it and thought, oh, I really want that. That's something called an impulse buy, and you can end up spending a lot of money on something that you decide, oh, one or two days later, I really don't want that too much. So, great. And what are two more things you've learned? Four. I learned um, what um, Mexico money looks like. Okay, you learn what Mexico money looks like? Yeah, all this international money is pretty fun to look at. And when you go to a different country, uh, ask your parents to maybe save as a souvenir or one or two dollars in, in, in this different currency. It can be fun to look back on. Cool. Great. So, does anyone have one more thing to share? Yeah. Uh, more Needs are more important than wants. Yeah, you all would not be super happy if your parents covered wants before needs because you would end up, um, instead of having warm winter clothes and uh, a nice um, house with good heating, you might end up having maybe a really, really cool looking jacket, but uh, maybe not, very, not anything else that would be uh, cool. And maybe you would have the big flat screen TV, but no heat in the house. So yeah, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be a super fun way to live. Covering needs before wants. Great. So I think that uh, you guys have learned quite a bit, and I'm really happy to work with you. You know a lot about money, and just remembering that you can really have an impact, and that the way that you spend money doesn't affect just you, but a lot of other people. So thank you so much for working with me on a kid's guide to smart money, and I keep going. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. You're in here.